My house is uh, right behind that yellow sign on the other street. And I've lived here for 60, 66 years. This used to be alfalfa field, and then the sawmill used to be there. The American Lumber Company used to be on that site right there. For many years, they were manufacturing particle board without blowers. All the sawdust was just going into the community. And finally, one day, I said, we're going to have to really do something about it. We got organized originally around a pollution issue. And soon after getting organized around that and having a couple of successes in getting some settlement agreements to get this industry to start to clean up, uh, we started to notice other issues in the neighborhood. In addition to dealing with environmental problems like the pollution from the particle board plant, neighborhood residents became concerned with the housing crisis also facing their community. The Sawmill neighborhood is located close to downtown Albuquerque and Old Town, one of the biggest tourist attractions in New Mexico. Today, land and housing are no longer affordable to the families that have lived in the neighborhood for decades. The city has always known the Sawmill area as a pocket of poverty. Well, this pocket of poverty all of a sudden turned into a pocket of gold. We have the city, you know, downtown area coming at us at a fast pace, headed north. We have Old Town really coming at us at a fast pace because of where it's located, you know. And then we've got industry, you know, and businesses. We started seeing that a lot of the homes that we did have out there and stuff were being bought by lawyers and everybody else to develop them. This community is slowly becoming gentrified. This is a historic area, so people are drawn to it, and the real estate values are really increasing. Within the last three years, we've had developments here that cater to people with higher incomes. We have new retail developments, uh, coffee houses, gallery-type outlets. People are being displaced from their own community, um, and that's something we wanted to stop Max and I, you know, and Debbie, Maria, and all of us, we started dreaming, and we started talking about land trust. We started saying, what can we do to keep people here in this community? You know, we're seeing it, you know, we're seeing it uh, slowly disappear. What can we do? After years of organizing efforts and many meetings with public officials, the Sawmill Advisory Council created the Sawmill Community Development Corporation which partnered with the city of Albuquerque on an ambitious plan to develop the vacant old industrial site that sits right next to their neighborhood. We felt if we could make an impact of this size, this is a 27-acre site, we made that kind of impact that there would be at least some housing that would remain affordable in this area. The master plan really reflects a lot of the ideas that we have been talking about as a community for about seven years now. The site will be developed in many ways. It's a mixed-use development. We have housing, senior housing, single-family housing detached, townhomes. Uh, we'll have a public plaza. We'll have a, a, about a three-acre park. As the planning phase moved closer towards implementation, the Sawmill Community Development Corporation was restructured into a community land trust in order to ensure that the housing will remain affordable and to provide for permanent community ownership of the land. I think they're very curious, to be honest, as to whether or not a community group like ours can really get going and can really produce. Having a partnership between the city and a neighborhood organization to do development of this magnitude has not been seen before in Albuquerque. Uh, the whole concept of having uh, the implementation of a plan be done in all or in part by a neighborhood group had not been seen before in Albuquerque. The community is the one that came forward and suggested a land trust. Um, and we see it as a tool to ensure long-term affordability here. It's not the easy path to take. Um, it requires a lot of thought and it requires a lot of organization. Many years. Mm -hmm. and then, uh... The Community Land Trust Committee put in hundreds of hours to work out the policies that will guide the land trust, 
including the details of the resale agreements that will preserve affordability while giving homeowners a fair return on their investments. Essentially, the deal is this. People acquire their home for a set price. That doesn't include the land. So already, the, the house is less than what you would find on the market. Uh, also, we plan to put in additional subsidies so that we're able to um, qualify people at lower income ranges. But when they sell their house, they're able to recoup what they've put into it, their principal, their down payment, um, any improvements that they've made to the house, the value of any improvements. And um, when they sell, they get a maximum of 25% of the appreciated interest. My name, my name is Max Ramirez, and I'm the president of the Samuel Advisory Council. And as many of you people know, that we have struggled through a lot of stuff in this neighborhood, and now it looks like things are coming back to where, you know, we're getting at least a little bit of pay to our efforts. While the Land Trust Committee was working out the organization's policies, a much larger number of residents were involved in deciding what would be built on the site and how it would be designed. And over here. I had to convince my bosses, the chief administrative officers and the mayors that I've worked for, that we ought to do this. They were, like, not enthusiastic originally to go ahead and say, hey, can we really enter into a relationship with the neighborhood to plan for 27 acres in the middle of our city? What are people going to think? Is it really going to work? Are we going to fall on our faces? Are we going to look stupid? What have you? And so I think we're at the point where we're going to kick it off for real. We've got the plan ready to take it through the development approval process and from there to building it. Well, thanks, everybody, again for coming. I appreciate it. I hope all of you buy a house over here. And that was a start there where people really started to take notice saying, hmm, maybe, you know, maybe the community is changing. Maybe there is, you know, hope for it after all. The community was involved in this planning process. As a result of that, the neighborhood is, is very supportive of this project. And that was really important to us to get the community engaged and to support it. Because the truth is, if a community doesn't, it doesn't matter how good an idea is, if you don't get the support for it, it's not gonna happen. Really, you know, if we as, as an organization wouldn't have taken heat on this thing here, you know, no telling what the city would have put up here. Like I tell you, I'm really pumped up. I can hardly wait to see the first one go up. While the sawmill residents are just getting their land trust off the ground, residents of Burlington, Vermont, are seeing the impact of a land trust that has been around since 1983. One of the largest and most active in the country, the Burlington Community Land Trust has over 1,000 members today and was started with the enthusiastic support of a progressive city government that had just been elected, a government that was determined to find a long-term solution to the city's affordable housing crisis. It's a university town. We had a waterfront that was developing, and the low-income neighborhoods adjacent to the downtown were in need, a great need of revitalization. It was an old housing stock, but we wanted to be able to revitalize those neighborhoods and improve them without gentrifying them, in other words, without making them unaffordable to the people who live there. Certainly at the federal level, there has been an incredible investment in affordable housing over the past couple of decades. The problem has been that the benefit of that investment has typically been very short-lived. And after a fairly short period of time, the money that the public has invested in housing has gone out the door in, in the pockets of an investor, a developer, or a landlord, or a first-time home buyer. By supporting the community land trust model, a number of things are done. One is the profit motive is taken out of housing. And I think particularly if there's a public investment in housing, I think we ought to be very careful as to where that investment flows. And through the land trust model, that investment remains with the community, and the long-term affordability of that housing is guaranteed. 